We are also following a new report surrounding the federal investigation into the shooting death of Michael Brown. With the Justice Department set to close the investigation soon, law enforcement officials tell the New York Times the lawyers handling the case will recommend that no civil rights charges be filed against former officer Darren Wilson after the FBI investigation found no evidence to support charges. Now, once a recommendation is made, Attorney General Eric Holder and DOJ Civil Rights Chief Vanita Gupta will have the final say. But as the paper notes, it is rare for them to overrule attorneys' recommendations. So far, the Justice Department is declining to comment on the report. And attorneys for Brown's family say that they will wait for official word from the Justice Department. Now, while it is unclear like the final decision will be made, there is still a broader ongoing civil rights probe into the Ferguson Police Department. Join me now is civil rights attorney John Burroughs, who has handled several high-profile cases, including the Rodney King case and civil rights settlements against the Oakland Police Department. Uh, we thank you for being with us uh, here this morning and, and want to ask you here right now, this is, this is coming from unnamed law enforcement officials here. Our NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams points out the prosecutors have long since concluded that there was not enough evidence to support a civil rights case since it requires a very high standard of proof. So break that down for us. How high is that standard? Well, it's pretty high. I mean, you're talking about uh, a, a statement where a person has to have a, uh, a specific intent to violate a, a one civil rights. That's a pretty high. It's a, you know, be, a proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, and, and so prosecutors in, in the U.S. government are very reluctant to bring these kind of charges uh, unless they have clear, un, un, uh, uh, uncontroverted evidence. In this case, you have conflict in the evidence. You don't have any evidence that really offsets what the, what the police officer had to say. You had a fight at the car, and therefore the officer has a right to respond to that. And then later you have uh, testimony that suggests that Michael Brown was charging at him. So at the end of the day, he's like defending himself, given the facts that we know. There are other people who will testify to other things, but the truth of the matter is, it's conflicting evidence. And so for mm -hmm. the Justice Department to put that kind of evidence on, it's not clear enough uh, for him to prove specific intent that, the, that he was trying to violate the civil rights. So it's not surprising. It was pretty clear to me that once you had to fight at the car and Michael Brown ran, whether or not he turned and came back or not, the officer felt that his life was, in, uh, was justified. And, uh, Take, uh, shooting his weapon was justified, and so that, that makes it difficult for the U.S. Attorney's Office to uh, prove a case uh, beyond a reasonable doubt well, with their specific intent. John, let's consider this here. The, the Times says the FBI, quote, interviewed more than 200 people right. and analyzed cell phone video, uh, cell phone audio and video there. Officer Wilson's gun, clothing, and other evidence were analyzed at the FBI's laboratory. Mr. Holder ordered a separate autopsy, which was conducted by pathologists from the Armed Forces Medical Examiner's Office there at Dover Air Force Base. And then in this here, the federal investigation did not uncover any facts that differ, uh, that, that differ significantly from the evidence made public by the authorities in Missouri late last year. So we have all heard from Benjamin Crump, who represents Michael Brown's family, who told the New York Times, quote, I have heard speculation on cases before that didn't turn out to be true. It is too much to put the family through to respond to every rumor. So if this does turn out to be the case there, what are the other avenues for the Brown's family uh, as far as civil suit or anything else? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's uh, clearly a civil, federal civil rights lawsuit here. Uh, it's called the 1983 section uh, of the Civil Rights Act, and, and you and and you can say that it was a wrongful death, that it was improperly done. The burden of proof in that case is substantially less than proof beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, and, and so that can be done. The other thing is that from a from a global point of view, the Justice Department is looking at the department, uh, the Ferguson Police Department, for purposes of determining whether or not they are dis, uh, disproportionately uh, affecting African Americans in a discriminatory way in which they're policing. So therefore, they go to the question of hiring, they go to the question of what kind of stops are being made, what kind of force is being used, or, uh, whether or not there's improper discipline or lack of discipline or, in terms of these issues, or whether departments are used, used in such a way uh, to uh, bring down discriminatory law enforcement on the community. That is a mm -hmm. huge issue. That can be done, but that's not relief for the family. The family's relief will have to come through a civil rights lawsuit, which I'm sure Mr. Crump and others will, will bring. Sure. But they do have that avenue. And we know that that's going to be going after the Ferguson Police Department, not necessarily officer, uh, former officer Darren Wilson himself. John Burst, as always, we appreciate your perspective from San Francisco yes, this you. morning. Yeah.